Hello, welcome, thank you for joining. It's another beautiful day. And as usual today, got some tunes in the background. Decided to bring some of the older ones I used to play uh, <clears throat> in the early days of the stream into the mix. Just kind of randomly playing. I hope you can hear it on that note. Sound check. Can I please get a sound check? Thank you so much. <laughs> I think I'm good right now, though. You hear me? No music. Thank you, Smalley. I appreciate it. Let me bump it up just a little. How about now? Sounds good. Uh, good morning, Sophia Sunshine. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining. Very faint. That's what I wanted. Thank you, Smalley. appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, all right, the morning ritual of the soundtrack out of the way, uh, just wanted to go through the list of things today, yeah, open MWE first off, uh, okay, hi is awesome, and that's my man who has done the Wabajack for total overhaul, and frankly, you know, worked a miracle, nobody was, uh, hey Santa, welcome my man, good day to you, uh, worked the miracle of excuse me, um, making a Wabajack, you know, so if you are really somebody who doesn't want to, like, do the manual install, and you have, uh, the Steam copy of Morrowind, and you have Mod Organizer 2 and can use that, and you have a Nexus account, <clears throat> I don't know if you need a premium at this point, um, but yeah, try, check it out, um, it's great, join the Discord server, check out his, his Kofi coffee, um, please, you know, uh, good stuff. And this is, uh, it's just such a great thing for, for the community and to, to see this happening. Easy access to all the good stuff that we get. <clears throat> Excuse me. So big props to OK Hi. I love you, man. Moving on. Uh, there is the mod that we added. Thanks to our friend, uh, recommendation by our friend, Detail Devil, uh, Logs on Fire. And it's great, but there's some dot, dot, dot there. Um, we have, in addition to the T.O. Patches, which is a shipyards-friendly random tax man. I've done the tax man quest, I don't know how many times in the past couple of months, just like getting everything ready for 6.x and stuff, making sure things fit. And there were a couple spawn points that were uh, <clears throat> a little awkward, shall we say. Uh, so I, you know, moved it around a bit, and, and I think I made them work pretty well. Um... Good morning, Section 8. I'm so glad you're here, my friend. Uh, welcome. Uh, uh, it's so fortuitous that you showed up right now. Detail Devil, my friend, also so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining and welcome. Uh, I wanted to do a quick on the note of Logs on Fire. Uh, I wanted to take a look at using OpenMWCS and what is my, <clears throat> excuse me, what is my workflow for modding and the patch process, which is 100% OpenMWCS driven. Um, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, lately, I've been on a quest uh, discussing actually with our friend Detail Devil about finding the best settings for performance because I want to play on my Steam Deck and I want to have all the glorious goodies, but I don't want to have a slideshow of a game. You can do it. We'll get to it. Uh, also, our friend Ezzy, also known as Ezzy Tabby on Discord, if you're hanging out there with us, um, has a buddy of mine has shared some of his scripts that he made to uh, aid in designing his mods, like Forested Morrowind, which puts the giant trees all over Vardenfell. He doesn't hand place those. He actually has a script that can intelligently, very intelligently place them, and he has a nice play on Waza Bear's light script um, that I hope we'll have time to look at today. <clears throat> no 6.x stuff today we're just gonna double down and look at the cfg generator because we're like real close on that um you know uh we have now custom base folders on the beta site cfg generator mostly working um custom lists uh not really working at the moment but they're gonna be there soon um and <clears throat> indeed the code will be boring enough that we could implement it you know on the show here today hey fane welcome good day i'm so glad you're here and uh yeah so excuse me Whew. Um, that would be the agenda for today. So jumping right into it, I just want to say Logs on Fire, recommendation from our friend Detail Devil. Fantastic, but actually, as it turns out, uh, well, we do need a patch. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here right now. So let's go ahead, 
load it up here. And I've got total overhaul set up, which means we've got beautiful cities of Morrowind in the mix, naturally. Um, jumping ahead a little bit to the chasing performance aspect, um, I have managed to make my little potato laptop here with the integrated Intel run a respectably between 20 and 30, depending on the scene's FPS. Uh, here in the stream, I don't know. Might be like a slightly less charred potato. We'll find out in a moment here. But I was actually like walking around happily uh, enjoying it. But you'll see what I mean at least here in just a moment. And <clears throat> excuse me, this is one of those patches that I think will be pretty simple. I actually haven't really thought too deeply about how I'm going to do this. I actually wanted to um, do this here with you all on the stream. So, okay, we got to wait a second because we have our... Um, negative light disabler script chugging at the moment I assume it's just reading all the cells you don't notice it in the beginning of the game when you start an actual new game there it goes because uh, you know you got Jube talking to you and whatever all right here we go so oh my oh my here we go that initial like putting everything into memory when you turn around so here we go yeah I mean hey 10 FPS I feel like this is a, a decent grade potato but maybe you can see it already right there there's the fire. Oh, no. <laughs> and so, let's just hop on up there. And here we go. Yep. Beautiful, by the way. Look at that. Huh? Pretty nice. I just wish they were in the fireplace, right? Um, so, of course, BCOM has the taller lighthouse option, which I'm a big fan of, you know? I mean, who doesn't want to be higher up, right? And so what we want to do is we want to put them in here. Or actually, hey, we don't need to. This one has already been replaced. It's the nice little burned log. So really what we want to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, we just want to make a small patch. And we just want to change the mesh of this guy, these guys, to the invisible editor. -ness. So, okay, well, let's do that right now. That makes it a lot simpler, actually. If uh, for whatever reason, those logs in the fireplace in the lighthouse didn't change. It would be a slightly different affair of, like, swapping the meshes or whatever. We don't have to do that. So, okay. Let's, uh... Fire it up. And so, uh... When you, uh... Yeah, okay, thank you, Detail Devil. This would work if these logs had a unique ID. Right, right. So assuming um, the the those specific logs were, like, special, then the plugin could just change them and, you know, whatever mod changes them would happily obey to the whatever position they're supposed to be, you know. Um, so if, for example, uh, logs on fire were to update, whatever patch I'm going to make right now, Right, Altario, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, good day to you, and you raise a good point. Isn't this going to cause issues in other places as well? Checking every fireplace sounds like extreme pain. <laughs> hey, good day. So, yeah, what we're going to have to do uh, is give them a unique ID. Um, and thank you for pointing that out. That is a crucial step before we make them invisible, is we'll have to give them a unique ID. And so the CS, if you're wondering what the heck is happening right now, the CS will chug a little bit when you're opening um, a load order with, you know, I think we're pushing 500 plugins right now, actually. So it's just chugging right now, but it's going to be with us in, in just a moment. Hmm. So it's going to, any moment here, Todd Willing, bring me my list of plugins. I don't normally open the whole total overhaul list, right? Like, normally I would find, uh... I would find, like, the chunk of mods that I need. Uh, Section 8 says, couldn't you just delete the cell references if this is an option? Mm, potentially. Um, that's one option for sure. I was advised by Random Pal specifically not to patch with deletes. Um, so I don't know. You know, I don't know about the specific contexts, like, of the weirdness of, of the engine. How it will apply, for example, something moving something and then another thing deleting it and then me moving it again or something like... Something similar to the issue I saw when I was making the BCOM 
distant ghost gate patch. Uh, Detail Devil 2 says the easiest way to fix this would be ESP replacer for logs on fire. Yeah, um, well, actually, that's a good point. One thing I didn't check. Let's do that now. Thank you for the comment. That's really an excellent point. I didn't check permissions and credits. Okay, so there are no upload permissions on here, but perhaps we could reach out to MWGEC, make the... Um, you know, the plugin available on the mod page, perhaps. Um, well, let's just, uh, let's do this here. Beautiful cities of Marwood. Logs on the fire. And maybe this won't be like the final form of whatever patch this is, but we'll at least get to kind of see, you know, what's happening here. Uh, El Tario says, for static objects without any scripts, removing the references should probably be totally fine, but I'm no random pal. Yeah, totally. So actually, it's funny you mentioned that in the context of what I was speaking about. Um, you know, we are talking about activators actually with scripts, the ghost gate, gate fence. So um, maybe that's why it was funky in this case. It wasn't just some like toddly magic detail devil. You can't unfortunately modify references that stem from mods unless they only modify vanilla references. Um, you can actually do that with OpenMWCS, my friend. Most of my patches actually do that. And I'll show you. I'm just going to give it a kind of a cheap name here for now. Let's at least find the offending logs, shall we? All right. And so uh, first thing I suppose I should describe what I'm doing here is I kind of zip along. First thing I want to do is I want to look at the cell in the 3D, uh, you know, editor. That's not the right window for it, but whatever. World cells brings this kind of window open here. And the very first thing I reach for is the record filter up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can probably see the syntax here is some kind of a bizarre uh, query syntax. But the first thing I do is I replace ID with name and I type say S-E-Y in front of the period star and that's enough to give me what I need, actually, which I think is minus two, minus ten. Let's, uh... Yeah, well, it's one of the ones I need. Here we go. This minus nine is the one that I actually need. Oh, no, 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 it was minus ten. Eh. Oh, you know what? Haha, <laughs> I goofed. Because we also need the taller lighthouse plugin. Okay, that's fine. We'll just, we'll load up the CS once again. Hmm, all right, well, while that's happening, we'll go back to this. And yeah, so that's a, uh, going back to what Detail Devil said, can't modify references that stem from mods, um, is the case normally, um, but actually I have a collection of patches that are built exactly that way. Um, in fact, I have one that Random Pal actually gave a unique ID to a wheel in BCOM because we have to move it just a little bit to make it fit with the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Imperial Town Replacer that we're using. You can do it, little buddy. <sighs> Too many mods. Time to have a sip, uh, enjoy your beverage if you've got one, coffee, tea. I've moved on from coffee, ooh, CS heard me. New add-on, all right. Now it's beverage time, cheers. And one thing I was thinking of, too, um, was actually trying to show my Steam Deck um, gameplay on here. But I don't know, like, how awkward that would actually be. So. Section 8. I was actually curious to see if that was the case or not. There's really no reason you shouldn't be able to modify references from plugins except arbitrarily restricting it, doing it to ESP files. Um... Detail Devil. Yes, this works with unique IDs because in the CS you create a new object with the same ID and assign it to the invisible NIF. Exactly. That is exactly what we're going to do. But this time I'm actually going to load the right thing up here. I goofed. We need the taller. Yeah, here we go. And we need the log. It's on fire. Okay. BCOM. We give it a better name at another point. Good. Okay, so yeah, world cells are 
search key changing from ID to name. We're going to type S E Y to minus 10 view. Right click on the name there and uh, select view. Actually, actually close this. I don't need that anymore. Now we should see the floaters. Todd Willing. Oh, no, we have two lighthouses, actually. Ooh, yeah, okay. This is something I've seen before from opening up BCOM. This must be some detail about how RP implements BCOM. But, yeah, you do see, uh, I've noticed, you do see some of the old stuff just here. Um, not totally replaced. There's the taller lighthouse. Here's the original one. I don't know how RP works their magic on this. <laughs> I think that's what we're seeing, though. In any case, this is the one right here. Light log pile 10. And so what I'm going to do from here is try to find the specific instance. So I right click, or I left click on the world up here tab. I select instances. And this is where we're going to get a little crazy with some filtering. Uh, uh, section 8 asks, did they script disable the objects? You know, I've actually not looked deeply into the guts of BCOM. Uh, would, I feel like, be a very interesting experience. Seems likely. I'm not sure. Anybody who knows, chime in. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to get this log here. And the easiest thing I can do is mm, probably a two-string filter. And what I mean by that is we'll go up here. And unfortunately, it's very small text size. I can't really uh, shift left click the logs. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Section 8. I was trying to find that binding earlier. See, even I don't know WTF TF I'm doing here. Good. Okay. So that's fantastic. We have the object ID, light log pile. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Thank you. <laughs> Having too much skooma before coming off the ship mod. <laughs> yeah, I hear you, Ethan. We need that. <laughs> And we'll just like preserve the dupes there and uh, and have a little bit of the Sotha's combat pack where you're low on magic and everything's like blurry. That's like the ultimate experience. <clears throat> Excuse me. You should be able to delete from the bottom right of the window too. Yeah, so I'm actually not trying to delete it. Um, even though in this case it's probably fine. Uh, you know, but uh, just to show you what Section 8 is talking about here. Sector 8. Section 8. Your sector here, Section 8 there. Forgive me, my friend. Is that. And there we go. Shift left click again to open the other one. And there's a little minus sign down here. You click that. Okay. Let's actually just roll with that. All right. Cool. And now I'm just going to kind of chuck this into a, some folder that I already have in my load order for expedience sake. Uh... Open MW data. There we go. Mods, patches, total overhaul patches. We'll throw this in my AF fresh patch folder. We'll chuck it into the load order there right after logs on fire. And hopefully, Todd willing, we have no floaters. All right. Excellent. Time for another sip. I suppose that there's no script attached to these things, and if that is indeed uh, as as um, you know, Altario mentioned before, you know, maybe the delete is fine. Certainly, um, ground cover if I straight up deletes things to do its thing, and we're talking hundreds of deletes, you know, or potentially thousands in a, in a big load order like this. So no need to be superstitious about it. All right. The moment of truth. All right. Let's wait for the light deleter 
to delete its lights. There we go. Oh, oh wait, I disabled disabling clipping. That's fine. Well, there we go. Womp womp. Play the sad trombone sound now. I hear you, buddy. <laughs> well, there you go. So, what happened? Chances are we deleted the BCOM logs, which were themselves probably replaced by way of like a mesh replacer thing. So maybe what we need to do is actually just delete the log from the logs on fire plugin. Um, if there's a, just a reference in that cell. And normally what I might do is use Delta plugin query to query for that. Well, maybe well, let's try that. Let's make my uh, text bigger here. And uh, so what I was thinking was use Delta plugin query to just find uh, references in that cell from the logs on fire plugin and just delete them and output that to a plugin that deletes them. Basically what ground cover if I does, uh, which with, if we look at that tools, ground cover fi exactly what we have going on here. We have basically a Pythonification of running the command here. Uh, bear with me as I scroll up here and read it real quick. Parse it with my eyes. Yeah. Exactly. So we have the command that runs here. And it's filtering. It's using the uh, query. Or I'm sorry, the filter, which is the form of uh, query that actually will write its results to a plugin. Filtering everything in the load order that you give it. So what I'm doing right here is, oh, me oh my, hold on. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this specific example, um, it's saying just everything. But down here, I was uh, doing the input on the Arch Magister's abode, which is like a V2 of Uvirith's, Uvirith's Manor, player home mod. Um, and I was just trying to check because there seemed to be some script error in my load order. And so I was trying to see if it had this script. It does not. Um, but yeah, you can see right here I'm saying input a specific plugin versus right here he's saying just do it all. And then output obviously puts it into the, the deleted ground cover plugin. Description, pretty boring. And here's where it gets interesting. It says match cell. So that means find all the cells, references, um, and within them, cell reference object IDs matching some kind of a regular expression. Um, I've given Benjamin the feedback that maybe some kind of a non-regex um, case insensitive input would be useful because I've been kind of foot gunned a couple of times by weird casings. Um, and then, yeah, just delete it. Um, and so, in theory, that's what we would do here. Um, let's see if we can get there. Hey, Zach, welcome, my man. I'm so glad you're here. Have uh, hope you're having a great day. Uh, Zach says, I need to clean up dynamic distant objects. Lua kind of clutters up your log. Yeah, I was going to mention that. I didn't want to be like a fuss budget about that, but uh, I did notice it was a little spammy in the log. Um, maybe like an optional debug. You can switch it on, you know, if you want to kind of a thing. All right, well, let's go back to here. Um, so, yeah, Delta plugin query. Let's try this. I am trying to remember how I get the config file here. I think just telling it all will read my um, my user config. There 
There we go. I've done this before. <laughs> All right. Um, Matt. Uh, IDs. Yeah, give me IDs. No, no IDs. I'm just deleting. Match. Cell. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. There And another bug that may stop us flat here that I did report to Benjamin may find its way in the next release of Delta plugin is things get a little spicy when you're trying to pass in a cell that is a, a negative integer, as is the case here. Um, just for giggles, I forget the exact cell uh, that we was like minus 12, minus 9, or something like that. Doesn't matter, it's not going to work. Minus 12, minus 9. This is how internally Delta plugin sees the ID of this a cell with no like proper name. And let's just try to do it. Yeah, well, oh, well, that's a bummer. Yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, it doesn't like this. Now this could be like a... Maybe if you're on Windows at home and you're following along and you're using PowerShell, this won't be an issue for you because PowerShell might process this hyphen here differently. I'll try to escape it. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. Oh, yeah, it actually worked. This Whoa, crazy. I'm not exactly sure what any of this is referring to. Um, Whoa, here we go. Wow, so that's a lot of stuff. Woo, indeed, Sophie says, woo, yeah, indeed. Look at all this, wow. But I think, hmm, okay. See, we have a problem though. We got stuff, which is cool, but it's not really at all resembling what I'm looking for here. Could this be because this ID is looking for, you know, is this the awkward situation where like the, the ID of the cell without the name is technically fuzzy, you know, because you'll note we have cell minus 13 minus three, not really what we want here. And so this is where having the non regex match um, might be a little better. Oof. Maybe this will be a little cleaner. So anyway, though, I did uh, hop on, as uh, y'all should, too. Hop on, if you don't uh, mind fancy in Matrix, hop on to the Port Mod Matrix channel uh, where we're discussing all kinds of neat Delta plugin stuff, including this feedback I gave to Benjamin. Um, and yeah, wowza. <laughs> I don't think this really matches what I was looking for uh, much. But you can kind of see in principle what I'm going for here, you know. And so what I'm hoping will find its way into the next Delta plugin is a way to uh, to kind of fix this parsing issue here, right? Like I shouldn't have to do that, you know. Like let's just – maybe it's a shell issue. Maybe it's my end issue. But, yeah, see, it's still I – do not like that. And so what I did was I changed the double quote from single quote, which – in theory, changes how my shell looks at it, but maybe not. Yeah, I mean, basically the same result. Okay. So we can't exactly do it with Delta plugin, unfortunately. Uh, however, let's do, uh, you know, let's take one more look at this. But this time, I'm going to do what I normally do, which is, whoop. Hmm, yeah, okay, interesting. Okay, no, that's the wrong lighthouse. <laughs> I can read, I promise. We have the patch here for the Vivek lighthouse. Oh, it's on fire. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, there we go. I think that's just what we need. Oh no. All right, just the mod. Going to be a lot snappier this time. Ah, there we go. world 
cells. No ID name. Sada. See, like technically, most of these um, coordinate cells don't really have a name like that. As most of you probably know. <laughs> Let's view it. I'm just going to go for the blunt approach here. And uh, so to kind of, I didn't describe last time how I was moving around. I realize a lot of folks can't move around in the CS very well. And I agree, it's kind of clunky to like rotate and transform things. But I mean, the basic movement is not so bad. Just kind of like A, D here, S, uh, w, you know, just like moving in the game. And then I left click on the scene to, to move around. Don't right click on the scene and move around. Otherwise, it's going to spaz out and just, you know, like really move a lot. I do it all the time by mistake. <laughs> the rocks used to look better. Thank you, Smallio. Yeah, we actually just loaded up mostly vanilla setup here. We're interested in these logs. So thank you again to section eight here. We can just shift left click. Delete them. Shift left click, delete them. And actually, let's take a step back. Actually, no, we're gonna continue deleting. The thought I wanted to have, I had was, we can actually just edit, directly edit logs on fire and we can see kind of, uh, you know, um, it's direct reference in here, but we're just gonna roll with this for now. <laughs> if Ain says 16 times the detail. Yeah, they uh, indeed. We've got just like the basic, uh, I don't, this is not even, this is mop. I don't know if mop touches these. It's definitely not map th met though either. So, okay, take two on this. Here we go. Uh, section eight says you can do that for every component of a reference or object. So for example, you can right click the name of a script and open the script right from the cell view. Super helpful. Awesome, that's a great tip. Um, and further to what I mentioned earlier in the agenda here, uh, we've got a using the, uh, so let's go ahead and check this off. We've been there, done that. On to, I guess, the next part, uh, that is a nice segue of using the OpenWCS, um, detail devil. I'm sure MW Gek would accept a logs on fire ESP replacer. You would still have his mod as a requirement in the meshes. Changing the reference of another mod would be a game changer for patches. Yeah. Um, well, uh. That's great. Thank you for that information. I will be happy to reach out to them. Um, and, uh, you know, any basically any way where we can make this easier for the users, right? Fewer steps to get to a setup that looks good. Um, so, yeah, but so specifically on the subject of using OpenMWCS, we're going to get there in a minute because I want to see if this patch actually works. I don't know what you folks. So let's try this again. Let's, uh, uh, there, make sure we're, yeah, we're overwriting the old one. There we go. All right. Uh, going to go ahead and enjoy it. Cheers. And I'm really hoping coming up here, uh, we'll have, we're try, we'll try the addition of having actually Herdrax and Gonzo join me on the stream. Uh, with y'all, and I mean audio uh, as well, so it won't be just me here. Um, and we'll see, you know, how we like that. I'm thinking it could be kind of a neat, you know, Mystery Science Theater, theater 3000 kind of a vibe. Uh, we'll see, though. Uh, we might try that next week. All right, we got, we got to wait for the... I should just disable the thing while I'm testing. The light deleter. Actually, we could just load up 0 0.48 too, but oh well, it's done. Excuse me. We'll rein in that Morrowind volume just a little bit. All right, here we go. Don't try to run into the wall again. Oh, how could I forget? There we go. Still there, the logs. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do what we should have done to begin with. And 
uh, indeed, the reference comes. Logs on fire. Um, so something's going on there. Obviously, what I deleted was probably, uh, let's take a look. How much you want to bet? It's the reference from Morrowind itself. How can we find out? Let's go in there and see what Delta plugin can t uh, can tell us about it. So now it's patches, do a little overhaul patches. And I kind of lazily stuffed it here in this uh, prototype folder I've got, working with uh, Herdrax on uh, AF Fresh patch. Fix some stuff with Samaris Ancestral Tomb and BCOM because you got to play AF Fresh. Holy moly, it's amazing. All right, uh, let's convert this to text. Yeah, indeed. Here we go, folks. We just deleted the... It didn't work because we just deleted the Morrowind references. We didn't actually get the Logs on Fire references. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, but we should be able to use Delta Plugin and input specifically uh, Logs on Fire and, and you know, nuke them with a delete command. So, But I got to work out actually how to do that. Um, and maybe I'll poke Benjamin about those other features. Um... Because effectively, yeah, we could also use Delta plugin to clean evil GMSTs uh, if, if you know, we wanted to. Which I think would be desir desirable because Delta plugin, easier to use than TES3 command. It doesn't require Perl and all that. Uh, all right. Well, okay. I guess that's it for the logs on fire patching <laughs> aspect of it. But I did want to continue looking at using OpenMWCS. Um, and I'm going to reference here an issue that gonzo opened up here and um in gonzo's words these were the things that he himself as somebody who is interested in actually using the cs wants to know um and so i thought well um with section eight here um we could perhaps kind of banter back and forth about these things and our goal eventually is to actually do like a formal series where we go over these things and uh, we help y'all use this to the best of its ability. Um, and I realize some features are missing at the moment, right? Like I mentioned, navigating in the 3D viewer is a little bit clunky. Um, not really as efficient as other stuff out there, you know, Blender and whatever. But you can still get stuff done. Um, and so we can kind of help you get there. And also, like, help uh, the folks that do work on the CS get good feedback, you know, such as Nelson and, and Section 8 himself. Um, and also, but also Vidiaquam and others out there that we love very much for their work. So, <clears throat> introduction to the OpenMWCS. I tried to sum it up in two sentences, which is um, the CS in general is the tools that the game creators use to make the game, and it's what we use to make mods, more or less. Um, you could say more, but why? Uh, navigation of the CS. So, I think uh, we can uh, CS step. We can just open the CS and just talk through this, right? When you first run it, you're greeted with this window with this nice red dialogue basically making you not want to run it. <laughs> I mentioned to Lamut that maybe it's time. I think once we fix a couple low hanging fruit but critical issues, we can remove this. Um, you know, but we'll get there. So, anyways, though, you get a, you get a choice here create a new game. We're going to go into this, actually, at some point, um, because as I mentioned last week, there are projects waiting to make their own games. There's RoboWind, uh, which isn't waiting. They have a full game that will be releasing soon. Um, but there's also The Last Isles um, and other things. Uh, Starwind could actually probably eventually move all the way over to uh, not relying on Morrowind. We can create a new add-on. We can edit an existing content file. I'm going to do that for fun. And uh, let me select Logs on Fire just for fun. Um, and so if we were to make our own, though, we would do the window that you already saw me do a couple of times. And that simply adds another box here where you can name your plugin. By default, it's going to give you a name based on the name that it already has, but with OMW add-on uh, by default. I think a cool feature for the editor um, that I would like to see would be to just have you select what your output file extension would be, you know, by default. Um, Maybe also like editing masters directly, I think would pretty neat. Oh my, oh me, oh my, I'm excited. So, uh, Section 8 says, the next add-on for Starwind we're putting together is pure OpenMWCS. That's right, actually Iggy reached out to me uh, about uh, an expansion that uh, you folks are working on. I'm pretty excited. I might be making a cameo in it. I don't know. You're going to have to play it and find out. 
<laughs> All right. Um, so let's bring up the window here before I lose too much track of myself. Navigating the CS. Um, there's not a lot here to greet you when you first turn it on. You got to kind of know what you're looking for. Okay. So right now I want to see hmm, instances. So I left click on the world tab up here. I select instances. I'm going to make this window bigger. There we go. Just a little bit though. And there we go. What I want to see is, uh, let's see all the instances added by Logs on Fire. We'll go up here to the neighborhood, semi-friendly. <laughs> I would say neighborhood friendly, but because it's like your regex monster, it's only semi-friendly. Let's check for the key of modified. It's going to chug a little bit there. There we go. And I will type the letter A. No, not S-A, just A. Uh... The letter A for added. A is enough to filter. The values, I think, are... Uh, yeah, I did it again. Base, modified, and added. Oh, my. Thanks for the stream, Johnny Hostel. I'll be out by you today and tomorrow. Text me later. Santa Hools, my man, thank you so much for being here. I will do that, and I look forward to seeing you. I will force him to play Morrowind yet. I'm going to, like... Lock the doors, shut the windows, close the curtains. We're playing Morrowind. I'll stream it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyways, we're filtering by modified A dot star, which is regular expression for A anything, right? And since the only A value we have here is added, boom, we have, interestingly enough, uh, Ashmalek. This is actually the only thing that gets added. There is no reference added in uh, Satanine. Um, and if you're not familiar, this is a vampire den. I recommend going there. Anyways, we don't, we don't care about that. We want to see. Let's erase the A and put an M in there. And now we have all the references modified by Logs on Fire. Wow, cool. All right. But, I mean... Aren't we looking for something in uh, Sadanine? Did I say Sadrith Mora before Sadanine? We're looking in Sadanine here. So how do we get that? Going to go ahead and yank that out to my clipboard. Come on, you can do it, buddy. There we go. Going to type A and D for and. Open and close parentheses. Paste that back in there. Comma. Paste it back in again. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to change where it says modified to cell. I'm going to erase this M and put say, there we go. Now we're just looking at all modified things in logs of fire in say to name. And we can see we got a couple logs. Look at that. All right, I'm going to maximize this. Show me, right click, view. And so, okay, yeah, this is an interior. I should have been more. These are all interiors. There is no exterior modification to the logs. I'm a little... So I'm a little confused where the floaters come from. Maybe it's because, hmm, I don't, I don't actually know. <laughs> Very interesting. Are there now? So I'm going to type the full satanine, but I'm going to erase the regex. Oh huh, yeah, nothing. Seems like all interior changes. Yeah, it's all interior changes. This is a mystery. I don't actually know. So anyways, though, that's a little bit of a look into kind of poking around into the CS, just using it further to this point um, right here, navigating, right? Like, the CS is effectively... a. Uh, Oh, yeah, good call, by the way, uh, Detail Devil. Maybe it's a cell name, like minus 1012. Yeah, okay. Um, so, my filter if I should catch that if I do this. Um, what I was saying, too, is the CS is effectively a bunch of panes, right? So, real quick, just as an example, I can op open up another one here, scripts. And it's going to do this kind of thing here, which is that's not really what we want. We don't. 
you're not gonna use this on the right side here, but you can actually click and drag this, and I can be like, all right, all right, so I got scripts down here. We need to like, <laughs> I'm trying to find that area to grab it with my mouse, a little painful. But now, boom, we got like a little pane set up here, and like suddenly we have a workflow kind of resembling the vanilla CS, you know, with like the panels and stuff. Um, except for we can like really do this and, and have things however we want. We can have another entire window of the CS or we can pop out windows like this. Um, you know, I'm moving this over to my other, you can't see it, it's on my other monitor. Um, so yeah, just a quick note about, about that like and navigating and stuff. Right now though, we don't need any of that other nonsense. Um, and going back to what Detail Devil just said, maybe it's just a cell name and so the way that the cells are named without a without a name like that is uh you put it a pound sign or octothorpe or whatever the heck you want to call it um like that is the is the, basically what you see right here it's a octothorpe x space y um and that's how you search cells real quick here whoops let's open up the cells query on a name, say Danine, and so I want minus two, minus ten. Oh yeah, okay, ten minus two. Yeah, you got it. Uh, minus two. Interesting. So if we narrow it down here, there is actually no two minus ten edit, or two minus nine even. So that's really interesting. This is one of those uh, patches that is spicier than I thought it was going to be. Up there with the Ghostgate BCOM one. Whew. That was a fun one. <laughs> All right. Um, wow. Yeah. That was a great suggestion, Detail Devil, but I'm afraid I'm still a little clueless here. Um, yeah. No modifications here. You can see we got some. It's marked modified right on these ones. It's magic after all. Yeah, <laughs> indeed, says Detail Devil. So um, I'm going to shelve this for now at the risk of, like, you know, blowing the whole stream on it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so this, as a kind of uh, a demonstration of navigation but also hotkeys features, um, you know, I think we just checked those two points right there. Um there's actually, I was discussing this with Gonzo and Herdrax yesterday. I've never actually done this, importing resources using ESM files. Like, that's actually something I've never really touched before. So, you know, we could discover that uh, together on the stream. Maybe do some Starwind jamming. Section 8, what do you think? Let's get Iggy on here. How to search? I think I showed you folks kind of a semi-non-trivial search here. Um, but indeed, I've been working on uh, a dungeon mod. And... It's, you know, one of the dungeons is Dwemer themed. And so it's really cool to load up OAAB data and have like a filter that gives me just the cave and Dwemer stuff I want to see. Got to catch him during the day. Section 8 says about Iggy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't expect him to get here, get him on here. But hey, I can dream. <laughs> uh, creating an interior exterior cell links between them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. NPC dialogue. This is a spicy one because there is a bit of a rough bug in the CS at the moment. I'm hoping we can squash it, though. Um, evil Eyes CSJS doesn't have the issue of uh, contaminating dialogues when you add one, um, when you change an order. It's pretty bad. We'll get it fixed, though. Creating a quest, uh, you know, yeah, that, this kind of a thing. Something like, uh, you know, find a flower for Fargoth or something like that um, could be a, a very neat, simple thing, you know, but, like, deceptively complicated because, oh, yeah, just find a flower, but you would have to have, like, maybe a couple journal entries, right, um, some dialogue, maybe a greeting, you know, and this kind of a thing, so it might be neat to go over without getting too complicated, right, like, um, and then uh, authoring a mod kind of further into that, you know, um, things like what's the difference between the two formats and whatever, um, might even talk about uh, sort of my personal, uh, you know, publishing pattern. Actually, that is an interesting segue. Let's take a look at this right here. Instant. Yeah, I noticed this morning somebody in the OpenMW Discord modding channel was talking about some awkward 
pop-ins from Rise of House Tovani, which I happen to have fixed on here, but I noticed when I was trying to link to them, I came to this page, and I didn't have a Nexus Mods link here, you know? Whoops. Um, so, I mean, just as kind of a demonstration of my workflow for this website, I thought, let's just add it right here on the stream. Um, semi-related, not related to the CS, but semi-related to the whole process of publishing a mod. Okay, Johnny, enough. Let's do it. Let's go here to the tracking center just to get me at my... Yay. Randomized Dancers, our latest random fun pack from our friend Ezzy. Anyways, here we go. Um, no, that's not the one that I want. My mods, here we go. All right, there's the page. So uh, I actually keep the websites as just HTML files with my mod. So let's pull that up right here. Uh, just, uh, oop, just... Is, uh, oh, oh no, did I? That's right, I started using Zach's Lua, and so I shelved my own mods. I hope I still have them. Uh, yeah, here we go. Rise of House Tavani, web, s templates, man, here we go. All right, and so we'll look at the website here, and we got like home, change, log, read me. That's all just this bit right here. And so I just want to add another one that's the link to Nexus Mods. So let's do that. And Nexus mods. Let's get that link. And then so, voila. Commit. Link to Nexus. Okay, great, but how does that update the website? Come on, I'm getting there, all right. Now, uh, this is where the GitLab robots take over. I did a thing, whoops, punched my laptop too, sorry about that. Did a thing where I committed to Git, which is my version control, pushed it up to GitLab, and now we got a pipeline firing off here. The pipeline is gonna, among other things, build the plugin, zip it up, send it off to the, the GitLab robots where you can download it from, and it's also going to have another job here where it publishes the website, builds and publishes the website. Uh, so if I go back here and I control R and we have a link for Nexus mods right here. Yay. And that's sort of, uh, the workflow that I use for my stuff that I want to, um, make it easier for folks to have, right? Like you can very easily have your stuff on Nexus, but also have a, you know, a static web page on GitHub or whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, Detail Devil, thank you. Uh, competing with CSSE will be tough, although I could see being used for tasks that are impossible in the CSSE. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I don't think uh, it's going to replace the vanilla CS or CSSE anytime soon, but uh, I think it is, you know, for example, as a script editor, pretty good. Um, one thing I was talking about with Herdrax that is really, really nice is this verify feature. Uh, we used it on the stream here before. But it basically just, yeah, it just shows you, you know, stuff that might be problems. Um, and no problems. Logs on fire. Good job. Uh, but, yeah, you know, if you had, like, a, I don't know, like a script with, a, you know, the wrong syntax, it would show up there. So, I mean, CS, OpenMWCS, pretty good for writing scripts now. You know, decent for, for 3D editing. Decent, I would say. Um the grid and reference snapping is pretty good. Um, let me demonstrate that right here, actually. So, I'm gonna do a reference snap here. We're gonna, so I'm left click, or uh, left shift, middle click, yeah, there we go. Uh, left control, middle click, left shift, middle click, and then now I can, oh, no, 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 oh no. It's been a minute since I used the CS. Don't judge me. I've been too busy. No, no, no. I did it again. I'm trying to write. Okay, there we go. So this is the... It's snapping on a grid in relation to this keg. And yeah, so this is some of that clunky movement we were talking about before. There we go. So it's 
hold shift, right click on the green part, and move it like this. Uh, no, that didn't, no. Hold, hold left control. Whew, there we go. <laughs> hold left control, and then yeah, move it up and down. Um, hold left control. But what if I want to move them both? So then I can control middle click. Control middle click them both. Come on, you. Come on, you. There we go. And then that's a left control right click here. I'm just playing around here. Um, and I can also, I don't have to hold control. I can just right click and kind of free move them if I want. As a pair like that, um, H to plop them on the ground. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely got a long ways to go to be, like, the thing that everybody uses. Um, but for now, like, it's for some modest interior editing. It's pretty it's pretty nice. And, um, I mean, another thing that uh, Herdrax mentioned he really liked about it um, that I didn't really consider. But we'll go ahead and just do this right now. Come on. We need to add, like, a line there or something, Sector, like... Right here, I'm trying to grab it with the mouse because I can never tell where the divider is. We need that. Or even better, like some key binding, like it's a tiling window manager where I can like move things around. Ooh, we need that. It is technically a tiling manager here, right? Anyways, getting off the deep end. Right click on this. Let's look at the preview window. And yeah, we have this very quite nice preview window here where... Oh my god, again. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, I can just like... You know, oh. Okay. Because this is a different kind of object. So what I would like here, too, is we can have the preview window not open up a new pane. Am I doing something wrong? You can kind of tile stuff. It's pretty awkward. I prefer using additional views. Section 8. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, we got to go into that. You got to school me, frankly, because you know I feel like more than I do even here. But yeah, I see how the preview is. Like, every time I select a preview, it's opening a new one. No good. <laughs> it should just replace that one, right? I don't know. Um, that would make preview infinitely more useful, you know, so there's just like little awkward things here and there. I get it. You know, it's a little It's a little funky, but uh, There's a lot of love going into it uh, Nelson and others uh, again, you know section 8 and Vidi Aquam and many others have given us um, the love we needed to get this far so um, Yeah, you know Let's try to get there and so in the future. I would like to work with section 8 on Demystifying, I guess, is the best word for it, right? Demystifying the CS. And that's what this, the idea behind this is about. Um, and then, yeah, just modding best practices, modding with compatibility in mind. This is where I would love feedback from you folks out there, you know, um, that are our beloved modders, you know, Detail Devil, I'm looking at you, um, but also everybody. Um, you know, how do you do things and do things well and not be kind of a, you know, like a bad, you know, inadvertently a bad actor and stuff. Uh, never touch the landscape. <laughs> rule number one. Yeah. Right. That's like rule number one of the fight club of modding. Excuse me for a moment, though. It's time to lower the desk. Hey. Mm, yeah, landscape, probably the, one of the spiciest things, um, compatibility-wise. Merged lands tool is legit and, and seems to work quite well for resolving those conflicts, but uh, it's it's a bit of a chore at the moment to use with OpenMW since it doesn't read our config files. Um, so yeah, tips and tricks. Um, I think that would be along the lines of, you know, knowing like key bindings and how to tweak the CS, but also kind of things, yeah, like I was just showing how, to, how I update my website. I don't. <laughs> I push it up to GitLab and GitLab does it. GitLab pushes it out there for me and I don't, you know, I don't need to think about it. Not only that, I don't need to think about, uh, um, let's go back to the Patreon. I don't need to think about putting a dev build up because that also happens automatically by my friends. At GitLab, I can just click that. 
and I got a packaged thing that I didn't package that is the updated version. <laughs> is Section 8 Sector, Zachogenic says. Yes, that's right. Ta da! <laughs> Let me fix my camera here. Yeah, that's totally it. Um, all right. And yeah, to kind of just round up the kind of brainstorming about the CS thing, um, creating a game again is something that I think down the road we could, uh, we could definitely get into. Um, I am stoked to see the star wind from open MWCS, um, detail devil. I know a ton of mods and have an idea of what mods to look out for. If I want to specifically make my mod compatible with another mod, I load them both in the CSSE and later remove the dependency. Cool. Yeah, that's more or less. Thank you, Detail Devil, for sharing that. That's more or less what I do, too. Um, You know, I think that's the best, one of the best ways, right? Just open it in the editor and kind of check because you know what's in your mod, right? So you can kind of <laughs> just go in there and check. Smalio. But the landscape changes are the coolest. The giant mushrooms and flowers everywhere. The waterfalls. Okay, so la by landscape, we mean specifically the ground, though. That's a great question. So... So Smalio and I actually were playing uh, OpenMW this morning on my 4K TV on my non-potato gaming PC, and it was glorious. I had amazing performance, and I was thoroughly enjoying our friend Glitter Gear's little landscapes. I mean, the entire road from Sedanine to Balmora is just like, wow, now, you know. And um, the landscape that Smalio is referring to as the things like literally out there, but we are talking about like the landscape records in the engine and that's like the land itself. And those are the changes which are really spicy because they just are for reasons only Todd understands and people that uh, had too much skooma. Making hills and mountains. Yeah, yeah. Although you can make hills and mountains um, and indeed clever designers talented designers such as Glitter Gear and others are using OAAB assets to make hills and mountains using uh, statics and those wouldn't be subject to the same necessarily compatibility spiciness they would have their own kind of compatibility spiciness but um, so when Morrowind was made that was the way to make hills though is to make the landscape kind of there's a mountain it looks like a hill but it's a mountain um, and then yeah external tools definitely got to increase the literature and the knowledge for Delta plugin um Detail Devil, it will always create problems with grass mods and other mods touching the landscape. These conflicts will, will make specific load orders necessary and sometimes cannot be fixed without tools. Exactly. Yeah, indeed. And actually, somebody brought up in Discord today or yesterday about like the future of ground cover as like shaders that are effectively painted onto the terrain. Oh, that would be amazing, I tell you. Uh, ooh, the swishy grass is awesome. Yes, Malio, indeed. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, and that reminds me too, uh, section eight, you may remember, and perhaps others that have joined the stream before may remember I had like a shiny flashy rocks thing, excuse me, going on, uh, in my total overhaul setup. And it turns out ground cover, if I was catching OAAB grassy terraces as a ground cover object. And so like the rocky terrace was being turned into ground cover actually. And I found this out by getting close to it and it was swaying in the wind actually, because I was trying to figure out why it was graphically funky, you know. Um, so yeah, to see like the graphic, the 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 jet piece of stone, kind of doing this, a little wild, too much for me. Supposedly, uh, actually, Pope Rigby mentioned on Matrix, you can run the entirety of Morrowind.esm through ground cover if I make the whole thing ground cover. So all the buildings and everything are swaying. Yikes! I got that's like file that under. I gotta see that, but only once. <laughs> all right. Ooh, getting off the deep end there. Yeah, okay. Um, so using OpenMWCS, and I thank you, especially Detail Devil, for your questions and input. You know, um, we wanna we wanna make this a more fun thing to use, a more and a more viable tool. Um, and you know, if my C plus plus foo is better, I'd be out there doing it. But we're depending on heroes like uh, you know Zach and Section Eight who can do this. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about. Um, is finding the best settings for performance. And again, as I mentioned, I've been trying to, uh, you know, I wanna actually like have my first serious Morrowind playthrough in like a year and a half, close to it, um, on my couch, on my big 4K TV. But I also wanna be able to play on my Steam Deck, you know, um, and enjoy it. Uh, like, this is actually my platform of choice right here. I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna try, I'm gonna try to run it for you and show you. Might be a little too awkward, here we go. Here it is, eh, right there. 
It's going to take a minute to spin up. But the problem is you cannot simply load the same setup that you have into, you know, from a 4K setup into your Steam Deck. There's limited VRAM, you know, there's limited system RAM. Um, you know, it's an APU. There is no actually uh, discrete graphics card in there. There's just some voodoo by AMD and Valve making it all happen. Um, but it is actually possible to get a steady 30 frames per second on the Steam Deck with the full total overhaul loadup. Um, but there is one weird trick that's required. Um, and maybe you noticed it right here on the screen. This is actually the settings file for my laptop here. Maybe you noticed uh, when I was playing Total Overhaul just a moment ago. But the one weird trick I'm talking about is disabling the water shader. Um, it's a big sacrifice, to be sure. But unfortunately, without that change, I can't really, uh, you know, I can't even get close to a playable frame rate on the Steam Deck. It's just too slideshowy. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and hopefully this doesn't suck too much. Here we go. There's my... Eh, yeah, I mean, that's terrible. You can't really see it, but I'm getting with the water shader in Sedanine. Total overhaul. Five cells viewing distance. It's... Uh, I wish you could see it. Uh, like 25 FPS. But if I turn the water shader off instantly, solid 30. And so that brings me to one of the tweaks that I've made. Is I think even people with an awesome computer should just try this as well. Because you're going to get an overall more stable exper uh, experience. I think it would take a really extremely powerful computer to get a 60 frame per second you know, target everywhere, right? Like, even if you got an amazing graphics card, you're still going to dip here and there. And I think in the interest of, like, having a good, consistent experience, set a cap at 30. And so that's what I've done. And there's a few places you can do this in the OpenMW configuration. Um, so the first one, and I don't know um, low level what this does on the engine. So quick disclaimer here about that. Um, but there is this option. Actually, here, let's not be completely ignorant. Read the docs. Let's not waste away in complete ignorance here. Let's look it up. Target frame rate. So um, I'm assuming what it does is simple, right? Target frame rate. Target frame rate. Um, I'm not using VSync to do this, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, target frame rate. Okay. Affects the time to be set aside each frame for graphics preloading operations. The game will distribute the preloading over several frames so as not to go under the specified frame rate. For best results, set this value to your monitor's refresh rate. If you still experience stutters on turning around, you can try a lower value, although the frame rate during loading will suffer a bit in that case. So uh, that might be what we were experiencing when I first loaded it up, turned around, and it got extra slideshowy. But in any case, it's telling the engine under the hood, hey, this is the frame rate we're trying to get. Don't try to work any harder than that, really, and that's key. Cells, target frame rate. Um, but where else? Right here under video, frame rate limit. And I mean, that's pretty simple. The video subsystem of the engine, tell it you don't want more than 30. Um, I am using VSync, actually. I'm a liar. <laughs> um, normally, I don't use VSync just because I have a compositor on here that handles that. But, okay, I mean, you can use the VSync in the engine, and apparently it's fine. Your mileage may vary. Um, with these other two settings in place, it should be okay to use, like, your GPU's VSync if you wanted to, right? Like, if you got the NVIDIA settings manager and it can let you set like per app stuff try that out um but another thing on my 4k setup chasing performance let's go down here water another change was to just basically use uh the defaults for uh shadows i had all these things that i've been trying kept them in my configuration over the years um Lowering the shadow maps, lowering the shadow map distance, which is actually um, uh, an entire cell by default. This thing that I think somebody one time mentioned, you know, and I was reading the documentation, it's very dense. Um, same with this one, you know, and I just disabled them and suddenly my shadows worked really, really great. The defaults, it seems, are actually really good. So, I mean, props to any old name three for that. 
because I don't think they really change over the years. So yeah, I mean, just delete that. And really the only shadow settings you need for good performance shadows out of the box is just enable them where you want them, disable them where you don't. Um, I used to keep them enabled indoor, but it's like really awkward because you get the like shadows going through the floor kind of a thing. Um, and then, yeah, you know, if you're going to play with the water shader, which I do on my 4K setup, um, have it on the lowest quality texture size. So in the menu, that's low. Um, and then, yeah, this is actually the highest reflection detail up to ground cover. Refraction is on. Ripple detail, this is sparse. But this amounts to enough water detail that it's absolutely beautiful, um, you know. And you can get the ripple, too, if you've got 0 0.49. But with the, just with these tweaks, really. Um, oh, and the, of course, I'm forgetting the final and probably most important tweak here. <laughs> hey, Fane, my own player shadow scares me sometimes, so I have deactivated that. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fair. Um, especially because we don't have like a first person body, right? Um, I don't think you get the shadow in first person, though. Come to think of it, but yeah. <laughs> um, this right here, though, probably the most important change that I made. Uh, for this setup. And you can see here, I got a bunch of other values here um, ready to go to try, but I didn't actually stick with them. Object paging min size, size, the default is actually this, and I just added a five onto it. This says the minimum size an object has to be to be rendered in the distance. Um, and, and the default is, I think, reasonable. But when you have a modded setup, you start to have more things that are uh, bigger textures, maybe more complicated meshes, and it adds up really quickly. Um, and a value that I use on the Steam Deck actually is this one right here, 0 0.023. And there is a noticeable increase in pop-in and a decrease in detail. However, um, you know, I get a really smooth experience. And with a uh, further in view distance on the Steam Deck, you don't notice too much about the, uh, you know, the loss of detail makes the graphics card work less hard. But in my case, I got a AMD 5700 XT, which at this point is about three years old, maybe more, or three and a half. Um, it's not the newest. There's no ray tracing hardware on it. You know, it's not that hot. But it's a good graphics card. I honestly don't need to replace it, you know, because I'm only really playing Morrowind. <laughs> um, and, well, that's why I was playing Fallout 3 recently, and actually that's what motivated me to try locking my frame rate. Um, I noted that Fallout 3 was a perfect 30 FPS everywhere. Perfectly steady frame time graphed and Mango HUD. I mean, it was just amazing. And I thought, well, wait a minute. Maybe 30 FPS is fine for Morrowind. It is. Definitely go with it. Um, so yeah, I mean, just to summarize, you know, um, cell target frame rate, video frame rate cap down here, uh, use VSync. Uh, no, 4K, yeah, VSync is off on the 4K. I knew it was um, because we have Mesa handling VSync on that with the AMD graphics drivers um so your mileage may vary depending on your hardware and your operating system but you want a frame rate limit here you want to put the frame rate limit on the cells bit up here um and then you want to have an object paging min size that suits the power of your graphics card and uh you know we'll have these on the upgraded cfg generator we're gonna have these come out for you right we're gonna just like stuff like ground cover that basically everybody wants the same values for we're just gonna Put that out there for you so yeah um that's how i got a grid that's uh, my ted talk about having a good frame rate um on my potato laptop when i'm not streaming honest to goodness uh, if i disable the water shader it's a steady 30 everywhere and on my steam deck here um but also on my gaming pc that's got a little bit more muscle so yeah um thank you for listening to my ted talk about performance the next thing I wanted to show was uh, going back to our friend Essie who did the random dancers and the random, you know, four or five other things that ideas that uh, he's come up with or I threw, threw at him. Um, but he's got a GitLab repo, our friend Paolo here, where he has a couple of inter very interesting scripts. And I'm not going to use this today, but I just wanted to quickly show it. Um, he has written some scripts based on the Waza light fixes concept, which effectively read the lights in the game and rework them based on some parameters. And uh, this wacky one here, um, in a nutshell, what it's doing is it takes lights that are not attached to a light and it like just makes them any random color. Um, and it's using some JavaScript framework. Yeah, I, mean, I know, this is some good stuff. Uh, it's using some JavaScript that he wrote 
to do it. So um, I, I, he only gave me the link to the GitLab pr- just a couple minutes prior to streaming, so I didn't get to jump into it too much. But yeah, he's uh, you know he's working on basically JavaScript driven stuff uh, to edit plugins on Mass. As I mentioned before, he's the author of Forested Morrowind, and he uses. Um, tooling such as this. He doesn't go into the CS and place everything by hand. He actually has scripts that he's written to find the places on the train where he can put things. Then he, of course, goes in after the fact and, you know, sanity checks it. But yeah, it's just interesting to see some of the uh, neat techniques that people are using. And this is all driven by Greatness 7's uh, TES3 conversion tool, which will jump it to dump it to JavaScript uh, object notation, which then he just slurps it up in here and, and works with it. So yeah, good stuff. When I do stream gameplay, I actually hope to use the random lights one just for the giggles of it. I figure it would be pretty interesting <laughs> to have trippy lights everywhere. Maybe I'll even, uh, I'll do a, maybe a stream where I ground cover all the buildings and we have like Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band mode. <laughs> all right. So yeah, quick look at Ezzy's scripts. Thank you so much to Ezzy Tabby, our friend. And then, yeah, so uh, uh, let's take a look at what we've done in the last week. And my deepest thanks and props go out to Gonzo and Hudrax for helping me bang this out. Um, but if you go, uh, you can follow along at home, folks, on the beta version of the website. And uh, just from the main page, um, we can click the settings tab here. And uh, we've got a nice little area here where we can set our base folder now. Uh, and uh, we'll just go ahead and put home Fargoth. Hit the enter key. And what that gives us is instead of just the, the username or if you're on Windows, it would say like C games, whatever. Um, instead of that, when you look at a mod now, it will give you actually the folder that you put in there. Pretty neat. And this is an idea that was suggested long ago. Um, excuse me. And I wanted to do it long ago. Excuse me again. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just had like the... I was in a, a mood to write JavaScript the other night, and so I did it. And uh, let's take a quick look at what that is. Because actually, it's quite nothing, really. Um, we're just taking a value from your input box down here, and we're putting it into the, the JavaScript local storage. It's possibly some of the most boring JavaScript you'll ever see, which was great. It was super easy to implement, and um, you know you can do whatever you want. And uh, and it'll just work. Um, putting the path that you put in there down here. So, in the future, maybe we'll make it a little fancier, right? You see, we got a weird mix of slashes here, like. I don't know, maybe we could have a feature where it normalizes slashes. Oh, but does it work on the CFG generator? Why, yes, it does. Boom, here we go. Yeah. Ah, thank you, Sophia. I appreciate that. Sophia Sunshine says, that's so cool. Yeah, I appreciate you saying that. Um, I agree, frankly. It's pretty neat. Um... To be able to give this to people, right? And so before we wrap up 5.10, one of the things I want to add is like a copy to my clipboard button here, you know, um, or even just download the file, um, maybe if that's useful, but copy to clipboard, and then you could just open up your OpenMW CFG, pop, you know, plop it in there, or maybe a mod manager could automatically download it from the website, you know? Uh, I fully encourage any mod manager author to do that and talk to me about integrating with my website's data. Please do it. Um, yeah, Sophia Sunshine says it's going to be so helpful helpful for newer modders. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the um, key features of this, again, is I will show you up here. We have the appropriately named Test Mod 1 by our friend Hod Toward. He's a good man. And uh, so what we have here is the mod detail page. And you'll note the URL up here, Mods Test Mod 1. And we've got all the information here. We got multiple folder paths. We got multiple plugins, etc. But what happens if we look at the mod in the context of a mod list? And you can do that by clicking here. Suddenly, we're just showing one plugin, one BSA, one ground cover, just one folder path. Usage notes are gone. They don't apply here. And this is just a, a preview of the kind of way we'll be presenting pe information to people in the future, which is more accurately, more concise. Um, you know, if you look at the website now, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's actually, uh, da, 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 I don't know, let's, 
gra uh, graphic herbalism as one example. And we have, you know, I mean, look at this here. I mean, the information there should be pretty accurate, but like if you're a newcomer exec, uh, uh, as Sophia said, uh, a fan, very, very nice. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Um, if you're a newcomer, it's just like, blah, you know, what the, huh? you know? And so the future of this is going to be no usage notes whatsoever. And it's going to have the folder paths down there. And by now, maybe you've noticed the next really nice feature that we banged out this week, Gonzo, Herdrax, and myself. Wait a minute. This looks quite a bit different, doesn't it? We have actually totally redesigned the mod detail page and the props go to Gonzo for conceptualizing this design. And uh, he, Herdrax and I brainstormed it and we came out with this. And I think it's really great. It separates kind of the, just the information about the mod from the information about how to use it. The folder path, the plugin, extra configs, alternatives, you know. And so the goal is to present better information in a more concise manner to people because again if you're a newbie you don't want to have like a bunch of you know <laughs> this in your face basically and that's some of the most common feedback i get from people in particular um folks who are using mod organizer 2 for example and so an extension of this in the future might be um you know go to your settings page and maybe we'll have a set your tool option where I can say I'm using Rybash, I'm using Mod Organizer 2, I'm using the theoretical future mod manager that doesn't exist yet. Um, and it might show information specific to those mod managers. Um, you know, I personally wouldn't be able to implement that because I don't use MO2. I wouldn't be able to give you the accurate information for that, but I would certainly accept it. Um, and that's an idea I've got for the future. It's not really a much of an extension of what we already have. Um, so yeah, in the future, I'm looking forward to having no usage notes and just implicit instructions about what to do, right? If we go back to our friend Hod Towers test mod number one here, um, we look at it in the context of the mod list test number two, which is just a, you know, I put this on here so we could have it just an arbitrary test case. And you'll know, again, you know, we have the trimmed down specific information that we need. And so I'm really looking forward to getting this out there. Um, all right. Anyway, boring JavaScript. We know all this. Um, you know what, though? We got to make, we got to pull in some changes because Herdrax was busy yesterday. Let's go to... Uh, Doing Todd's work. Ah, thank you. Yes, I feel privileged to have all you here with me and also to have a crew such as Herdrax and Gonzo. Making it happen. Okay, so yeah, you can see here, big, big change to the usage notes by Herdrax because effectively we had all these usage notes like this that don't need to exist anymore, you know, right? Because we will have some instructions on the website that tell people this is how you use this page, but every, all the information you need is right here. We don't need to write a, you know, three paragraphs about what to do. It's just right here. So yeah, it'll be a good future. I'm looking forward to it. Less information to take uh, and curate while still providing accurate information. So, okay. Let's do what we haven't done yet. Uh, which is we'll open my shell and we'll build the website. I'll unstash my stuff. A stash in Git parlance is when you have something that's unsaved or uncommitted. Like I got up here, you know, this these changes. Um, and you don't want to save it, but you don't want to lose it. You can do what's called a stash. And my uh, Git client over here, Magit, makes it easy to do a stash. I just hit Z on this page. I hit uh, Z twice to save a stash. And, and that's what I just did. I saved my stash, pulled in Herdrax's work, um, and then put my stash back on here. And I can resume. So, yeah, one of the things I was doing last night, and I thought, you know, let's not get too crazy. Let's work on this on the stream with everybody here. And I, I went ahead and I removed this message from the CFG generator. Because the current version we have right here is indeed a work in progress it's a little bit rough around the edges i wouldn't um doing what modders can't do detail devil i appreciate you saying that this warning here is appropriate for what we got there it's it's a rough 
program, right? Like, I, you cannot seriously recommend this to, like, really use. It's a re good reference. The load order is for sure gotten from MLOX. It's tested. Um, it's just not quite as well, you know, cut down. So that's why I put this on here. But on the new version of the CFG generator, let's... Okay. Let's open the website. And no more warning because actually it is, you know, once we launch 5.10, it's good to go. It's a legit tool that I can seriously recommend to somebody straight faced. Yes, you can use this as is and it'll get you set up properly. All right. Well, um, in the state we're in right now, we can load all the presets. They all work very well. Um, but we don't have extra configs. What's going on there? Let's take a look. Okay. Extra configs, unless otherwise noted. All right, so this is a little bit of a hacky bit of code. We're just going to delete this. We don't really care if it's Android or Switch. That mod list doesn't exist anymore, actually. Um, a quick reasoning about why is because I don't play OpenMW on Android or Switch, so I can't, like, verify, yeah, it's good, you know. So I know people do it successfully, um, on Android at least. I don't know about Switch. I'm skeptical, honestly. Moving on. Uh, so, yeah, thing and extra CFG. This is kind of... This is what is not doing what I what I guess I expect to do. So let's just let's just plop that in there. No, you're not doing that. <laughs> All right, let's see what it gives us. One extra config. Oh, good. All right, true nights and darkness. Good. That's what I want to see. Well, so what's the problem? Hmm. True nights and darkness. Extra config. Uh, do I even is that even what it is though? Hold up. No, that's not it at all. It's just text. Here we go. And these would be the values for true nights and darkness. Um and so, again, if we have, like, a copy to my clipboard thing, you know, it would just be... And True Nights in Darkness is actually a really great example of another one that is going to be contextually different, right? Like, there's a couple values we don't use from True Nights in Darkness on our bigger list because we're using Skies 4, uh, which makes some tweaks to Skies and Cloud Speeds and stuff like that. <clears throat> so we don't want to use the, the vanilla-inspired values here because otherwise you have the clouds moving by super fast. Which could be interesting in like our <laughs> crazy town mod list that I'm conceptualizing. Uh, okay, wow. I mean, that was wow. That was easier to fix than I thought it would be. Again, uh, we just that was an artifact from how I used to pull the information out of the database. But there's one more thing I want to do here. Um, so it says here. Let's go ahead and refresh because this guy will be gone. Yeah, unless otherwise noted. These should be put into your OpenMW CFG file. But um, with the one-day modernized list, and basically all the lists, I was even thinking about adding ground cover to iHeart Vanilla, but we got ground cover on all the lists, including this one. Um, indeed, we aren't even showing the ground cover on here yet. That's something that we can add. We'll get there. Um, why not now? Let's see here. So... We have BSA plugin. I'm going to stick it in between plugin and extra configs. I think it should go there. Somebody stop me if I'm. Whoa, hold up. We're going to erase this too. Anywhere where I see some kind of hacky stuff like this, we're just cutting it out. Mm, hold up. No, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't get too ahead of yourself here.
because we only want to show this link if there is actually ground cover. Indeed, the section below will only exist if there actually is ground cover. Ground cover section. Hey, Roy, welcome to the stream. What's up, Anwa? Uh, thank you for joining. We're just uh, editing the website right now. Uh, we're working on the CFG generator, just making it better. Actually, I just added a link here. Let's see, boom, ground cover section. Doesn't do anything yet because that doesn't exist. Anyway, welcome, and thank you for joining us on this lovely day. All right, so ground cover. Um, I think it's going to go BSA, plugin, ground cover. Let's put it in there. All right. Nice thing about having Django as a back end of this is I don't have to have like all this garbage in the template, you know. It's all very concise. Plug in section. Okay. Yeah, right here. There's our section. A little bit of copy pasta. Makes the world go round. No UL class. Ground cover section. Let's take a look. Let's first go up here. Click it. Hey, there we go. All right. One step at a time. Actually, this is just going to be a completely copy pasta affair, really. Um, ID ground cover. We're gonna have to make an edit to the JavaScript. Maybe we won't. We'll see. For a plugin in ground cover, we can go ahead and just keep that temp variable there. Um, cover. Nothing might show here, but we can fix that up. We'll just have to recrunch the data. I don't think I have any. Oh yeah, hey, we do. Hey, thank you. Passed me. I already did this. Ground cover section. All right. Um. I don't like that it's not underlined. Links should be underlined. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to remove that. Um Yeah. I don't I don't like that at all. We're not doing that anymore. Links should be underlined. Ah, that's better. So yeah, there you have it. Uh let's pick a different preset. I actually forget how much of the ground cover data I translated. Uh, does this website contain a Kamana Tong mod? Roy says, hmm. Let's have a look. Nope. You got any good suggestions? Let me know. Yeah, nasty cam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to see what they were saying. I couldn't type <laughs> So that they can be joinable. Hmm, okay. Let's see here. All right. Join the Kamanatong. Kamanatong faction mod. Nexus mods. That's a great suggest. Great call out, Roy. I really appreciate that. So this looks interesting. Anybody played this? I do agree. Uh, Kamana. Oh, yeah. I sp Thank you, Altariel. Mm -hmm. Duck, duck, go figure it out for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. All right. Join the Kamana Tong today. That's a good recruitment poster, honestly. Um, yeah. I guess we have to try this. Mod lets you join the Kamana Tong and includes more than 40 quests only available for Dunmer character. Seems legit. That checks out. It wouldn't seem right any other way, I don't think. Um, I mean, they would have to have a pretty good story to make that work. Cool. Well, um, but is there anything else? Come out of tongue. Somebody else spelled it the wrong way. <laughs> Let's see here. Karis. Okay, so this is the author of um, Rise of the Tribe Unborn. This is a bit of a newer one. Uh, Roy says this mod looks good. Were you referring to join the Kamana Tong? It does look really good. Um, despite the typo, though, I have... A feeling this one might be good too. Um, hmm. So I mean, it, it appears. I wonder if I would have found that if I didn't typo it. Hang on. K 
cow and Mona. Oh my gosh, I like completely butchered it. <laughs> it still came up. Okay, <laughs> Polish version of the above. Um, okay, so yeah, we have we have two choices here. Um, thank you again, Roy. That's uh, that's a really good call out. I don't know. Um, I feel like these are both worth a look, honestly. So, yeah, I mean, I'm going to put that on the uh, the things I need to checklist. Um, because, no, we don't. As you saw, we got nothing, really. Um, I feel like Nastier Kamatatong should have been on there. Yeah, there we go. We got this one, but that's just strictly, you know, dialogue and stuff. Not really what you're looking for. Uh, okay, yeah, good call out. Thank you for that. Let's put the ground cover, um, or let's make sure it's in here for total overhaul. Yeah, okay, boom, that works. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and commit that. Nice. Okay, didn't even have to crunch data. Already had them in there. Thank you, past me. Time for a sip. Also, it's getting a little dark. Ah, there we go. Got a giant tree <laughs> right in front of my window. Okay. Um, let's take a back a look here. Uh, oh yeah, we wanted to put the ground cover configs in here. So let's do that. And so what we do for that is we'll say So what I used to do is when you were using ground cover, you would ha awkwardly have, you know, <laughs> four or five different mods telling you to set the ground cover setting. What we're going to do now is we're just going to give you the setting once. Not, you know, five times. You don't need it. Going back to my, what I was saying about less is more. Excuse me. But we do want to go ahead and copy paste that. From here. Ooh, and actually, this is another, um, in my quest to achieve good settings and a good stable frame rate, I, I did a bit of a cleanup of my settings, and it turns out, actually, of these, uh, only enabling them, and I believe stomp mode is actually needed. We'll take a look in just a second. Actually, let's go here. Settings, firmware, cover, yeah, yeah. Just stomp intensity is all we actually need to do. So we will copy this in there, but delete the other things. There you go. Less is more. And How do I give it here? Yeah, okay. I want this. But we'll we'll tweak it a little bit. I don't uh we don't need the name there. The settings.cfg file. All right. And so reload the page. Take me to the extra config section. No, yikes. All right. Excuse me. <clears throat> A little bit of white space. There we go. Um, and I think so. I think it's probably not enough to just leave this like it is. It might be confusing to not say right here, this goes into, you know, open MWCFG. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna actually delete that. There we 
again. Okay. And I forget the model field that I made. Let's go look that up. In settings. And I'm going to say if in settings. Okay. Oh my, what did I do? Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. And if, how dare I? Okay. If in settings and not ground cover, Ooh. There we go. Open mw.cfg. Okay. No, 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 no. All right. This goes into the settings.cfg file. Probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make just a completely different box because I wanna make it so that folks can, you know, copy to my clipboard kind of a thing. Um, so we'll probably have, ultimately we'll have a different uh, input box there for, you know, the stuff that goes in here and then the stuff that goes in there, just so people can more easily, because this I feel like still isn't good enough. This still isn't good enough. We need like a heading, you know, like a extra CF, extra configs. Maybe we got a, like a, You know, something like this. I guess I'm just doing it now. Okay. I had to pick the one with the longest block of text. Okay. We're going to copy this down here carefully. Detail Devil says, Rise of House Tilvani, Uvira's Legacy, Tamriel Rebuilt, Doors of Oblivion is such a great combination of story mods for Tilvani at least. I have to agree. That is... <clears throat> Excuse me, if you're following the mod list on the website, that's what you're going to end up with. Um, superb, excellent story, although I haven't played Doors of Oblivion yet. It's going to be my first time. It's one of the reasons why I'm stoked to play. Get to use uh, Static Nation and Detail Devil's own HD texture and normal spec map. Pap. So thank you so much for that, by the way. Looks amazing. Combined with uh, Glitter Gear's... Daedric Ruins overhauls. Um, oh, that actually reminds me. On the subject of Glitter Gear, he was kind enough to share with me his... Uh, uh, let's see, uh, actually, you know what? I actually already added it to the website. Let's go there. Resources. Glitter Gear's mods for Morrowind mages. Um, there's actually a really excellent uh, selection of mages guild, you know, Telvani gets a lot of love. Um, yeah, Efane, yeah, it's good feedback. This prevents people from just Control-C, Control-V. We will be splitting it up. Um, maybe even still on the stream. Uh, but a little diversion here. Telvani gets a ton of love. You know, rightfully so. They're a very fun faction in many ways. But uh, quite a good selection of Mages Guild stuff here, too, on Glitter Gear's website. I'm going to go ahead and put a link to that into the chat and also we'll go into the notes on the video on YouTube. Um, lots of really good stuff here with some alternatives, you know, um, 
and indeed Glitter Gear himself is working on a sort of the Mages Guild version of building up a Virus Legacy, um, sort of like giving the Mages Guild like a true like epic stronghold, you know. So really, I'm added it to my setup. I'm looking forward to using it. You know, I will. I'll I'll forego Telvani at least once to try that, <laughs> but I encourage you guys to check this out. Um, lo- again, lots of good stuff on here. You know, Imperial Dwemer Society I played with years ago. Had to remove uh, for some incompatibility reasons. Maybe we should revisit it. Herdrax, if you're watching this, man, that's one you got to check. Cold to the Clouds, that's another good one here. Yeah, just some really, really good stuff here. So a um, little bit of a segue, but I wanted to make sure to give that some coverage from our friend uh, Glitter Gear. So cheers. All right. And yeah, again, that's getting at this is a. Uh, making its way to the resources page, which I've also added. Uh, we got footer links down here. You can get to the CFG generator and whatnot. And also this page easily from any other page. Uh, got to put a link to uh, OK High's Wobba Jacks on here. But yeah, this is just where I post stuff that I've seen over the years. You know, uh, Dan JB, I remember, reached out to me years ago via email and we chatted about stuff. Um, Morrowind++, Sarfuzzo's mod list, been on here for years. Danae's stuff. Um, I try to I try to keep you know even if it's not specifically for OpenMW I try to link it here because it's good uh, good reading good Morrowind you know everybody wants to play MWSE sometimes too you know uh, I digress so we'll go back to the CFG generator I went a little bit off the deep end there all right so we don't have let's refresh the page. <gasps> Uh, okay, I'm going to take a lazy guess and just erase that. He's complaining about end if. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, cool, okay, this is good though. It's more than what we wanted, but it's good. This goes into. So we're going to get rid of the special notes. If not in settings, I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, well, I'm on Skuma here. Forgive me, folks. We don't need that here. Gone. If not in settings, we don't need that. Mm, we don't need that. Don't need that. Hmm. I think that's actually all we need. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Dangerous thing. A curly brace with no friend. In this case, an if block with no end if friend. Ah, uh, okay. That's still the wrong thing. I think because in the view. Yeah. So this is... Taking a step back on the website, all the web pages have a Python function underneath. This is the new Python function for the CFG generator, much more boring than the old one. Looks like there's a lot going on here, but if you look closely, it's like, you know, pretty boring. Um, and what we're looking for here, though, is I am giving extra CFG in bulk here. Um, so what mod list we're we looking at? Total overhaul up here. Extra CFG is just this simple query, which unfortunately um, includes OpenMW CFG and also settings files at once. How do we fix this? Easy. We'll just go to our manager, our query manager. This is how we can 
take Python code and use it to talk to the database in a way that looks neat like this. That's how we say total overhaul, uh, you know, here to get all the total overhaul stuff. So what I'm going to do here is extra C. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm reusing. I'm reusing query managers because I don't want to write the same thing over and over again. I got the mod plugins manager you can see here which I named when I wrote the mod plugins first and I named the query manager after them and then realized it applies to more things and was too lazy to change it. Um, we may yet do it before we merge. Maybe not. <laughs> Excuse me. So we want extra config mod plugins manager. All right. Um, And we want, so we want to say, this is a, actually, we're going to go ahead and give it a good name here. Extra CFG manager, total overhaul, no settings. And so, again, this is some Python code that lets us talk to the database. Uh, we have what's called a query set, is what we get by reaching into the database, and we're using a filter to narrow down the results. Currently, the result is only narrowed by mod list. We're going to go ahead and say um, in settings false. And that should be all we need to do. Let's go back here to the models file. We're going to have to import it. That's what you do in Python. You got to import it. Extra CF and no settings. Yep. Extra CFG no settings. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Oh me oh my. There we go. Awesome. We're getting to the point. We're inching closer. All right. Um. So we need now two different ways of representing extra CFG and. Settings, no settings. Okay, and this so this is going to totally break. I'm going to comment this out everywhere else. Oh, actually, no, that won't. This is Python we're dealing with. It'll be fine. But for total overhaul, we're going to go ahead and say uh, extra CFG. No settings is extra CFG. No, 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 no. Don't try this at home. Language server without goggles on. All right. Extra CFG. We want the object, not the class. We're not trying to make one. We're trying to hit one. We want to say extra CFG, no settings. There we go. All right. Give me all of them. Problem? Oh, we're never used. Okay. Okay. No problem. No settings. No settings. No problem. There we go. Thank you. Go back to our HTML. We'll yank the right thing out of the database here. Uh, okay. If extra CFG, no settings, or extra CFG settings, set in the stage. I haven't actually created that variable yet, but we're kind of setting the stage. After the stream, I'm going to go get lunch, and I don't want to make my full belly have me forget. Okay, um... So if we're doing any of them, render the section. Um, whoop. If extra CFG, no settings. So I'll just do that. Very good. Erase you. I'm getting a little discombobulated here. I 
might complain about this. We're going to find out. Boom. Oh. Oh, okay. It worked. All right. That's what we wanted. Just the thing explicitly notated where it goes. Copy pasta coming later. Good. For settings now. We got him. <laughs> All right. Uh, so settings now. Uh, oh, you know what? I think I'm... We don't need that. We don't need that. But what we do need is another manager. More managers. Okay, and settings. True. Turns out it's no simpler than this to give us another fancy query helper. Extra CFG settings. Oh, getting a little ahead of myself here. Got to get the old import on here. Settings, good. I think I broke the language server. <laughs> Give it a sec. There we go. You can do it. All right. And then up here, we'll just... One, two, three. Just like that. All right. Here we go. doesn't like my HTML. That's fine. I'm sure I... Oh, yeah. Okay. No, no. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. I lost my link up here because we no, long we no longer have... Uh, if... If... Extra... Extra CFG, no settings. Give me back my link, please. Thank you. For the open MW CFG, just what you need. <laughs> Conspicuously missing. Okay, all right. Um, turns out there's very, very few mods that need to go in the settings file. Weapon sheathing is actually one of them. We just haven't actually added the record yet. That's one of the things that we're still in progress on. But we do need ground cover. So let's go back down here. Or ground cover. Or ground cover. Okay. Then we do the back where we started from. If ground cover and if excuse me. Excuse me. We don't actually need the note. Mm, so I'll need to check this after we add weapon sheathing into the database. Kind of makes sure it looks okay. But for now, this should be good enough for us. Yeah, sweet. All right. So there you go. Um, and again, like in the future, I would love it if somebody made a mod manager that used this information, you know, or if somebody wants to make a custom mod list, you can do that on here. That's all. 
stuff we got planned um for the future so all right uh we are about at closing time here folks and i'm going to deploy the website momentarily we've got another green day but i just want to thank everybody for joining and i wish you a lovely day happy modding and we'll see you tomorrow we might actually do some playing versus just hacking tomorrow i'm going to drag my gaming pc over here finally as promised after so long we're doing it all right thank you so much again have a lovely day happy modding <laughs>